Ungdomsradio. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. This is Anna. And we have our very special guest, Sine. Hi. Yes, her microphone is working, Yupi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming here. It's uh, it's really fantastic. We, we love to have guests on our uh, live show. And guys, if you would like to be in Sine's seat, all you have to do is approach us on our Facebook page or on our web page, the5options.com, and you can be in the radio. Yeah, definitely you can. And also, if you would like to be on the radio at least like a little bit today, you can also call us. And the number is 60297550. I will say it again. 60297550. And today it's me, the Anna, that is operating the phone. So expect the unexpected because it's an iPhone and all my life I was operating with Android. So let's hope I can pick it up. You can actually check me and see if I'm very good at technical things. So it would be lovely if we would get a message or a phone call from any of our listeners. That would be definitely wonderful to hear from you guys. And today we will be talking about listening to your heart when it's calling for you. Yeah, so it's a beautiful topic. And uh, we will be talking about it with our special guest, Sine, and not only talking, but she will also sing for us, which is beautiful. And our followers have requested a few of those songs. So we will have two, three, two songs requested by our followers, <laughs> sung by Sine. And then we will have for the very, you know, last moment, we will also have a song that Sine has chosen, the one that makes her listen to her heart yes. can, can i just ask one question sina yes is it by any chance rock set, <laughs> rock set. <laughs> no guys i have I to disappoint you oh uh, you know i was really dis not disappointed but surprised you know listen to your heart and no one requested the listen to your heart song which is basically <laughs> you know the, the the anthem for listening to your heart so i was really really surprised maybe too obvious you know like if, if, so. if like someone sings listen to your heart it is like you know you stop listening to your heart because maybe it's like you know a command yeah maybe maybe people f felt like it's ah it's too predictable i want to be a little bit edgy and i will come up with actually the songs that you are singing today they are more like from the indie side than the commercial side they are really great songs by the way guys so stay tuned because we are in for a treat so guys we will today make an interview with Sina. We will also discuss the results uh, from the survey that we made. Every time before the live show, we involve the local community here in Aarhus and we ask questions and people are so kind to answer back to those questions. So we will tell you what were the results from the questions. Mm -hmm. And then we will actually talk on how to take those decisions when listening to your heart. Like, how do you actually do it? Yeah, every now and again, we will have some beautiful requested music. Mm -hmm. So the time now is for the very first request, which is by Luba Drabchuk mm -hmm. for a song Sweater Weather by The Neighborhood. And Sina will make her own version of that beautiful song. So we are very excited and very ready for Sina to sing it for us. Yes, darling, whenever you're ready. Thank you. And hi, Luba. I decided to, to change it a bit, but I hope that you like it. Otherwise, let me know. <clears throat> All I am is a man. I want the world in my hand. I hate the beach, 
But I stand in California with my toes in the sand Cause it's too cold for you here And now, so let me hold Both your hands in the holes of my sweater Use the sleeves of my sweater, let's have an adventure Head in the clouds, but my gravity centered Touch my neck, and I'll touch yours You in those little, how is it short? Cause it's too cold for you here and now, so let me hold both your hands in the holes of my sweater. Cause it's too cold for you now. So let me hold both your hands in the holes of my sweater in the holes of my sweater in the holes of my sweater oh my god this is so beautiful I, i'm sorry i you know i have this really weird reaction when i hear uh, to a song or i see something artistic that really is like beautiful i start to cry so i started to cry everything is fine <laughs> with me but my god you are so talented and uh, guys i am surprised because i never heard sina singing marta heard sina singing so basically marta you know called me a week ago anna I have this girl, she's fantastic. She will come on a show and I was like, yeah, I trust you because I always trust Marta. But I was not expecting that. Amazing. Goosebumps and so my, my hair is standing, guys. <laughs> Actually, it was beautiful. Guys, Absolutely her, beautiful. Hair, her hair are standing on her uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> arm. Yeah, on my arm. Oh my God! Yeah, you must have a big trust in Marta. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I would. I would give my life to her. <laughs> okay, uh, let's stop with the. Uh, <laughs> fantastic! You Thank are extremely you. talented. Really, honor to have you here. Wonderful. It's a joy, and I'm really. It's such a joy to be here. We are really, really happy that uh, you were able to join us here today. And actually, we would like to make a small interview with you. So, you know, we said that your name is Sine and it's because we didn't dare to say, say your last name as well as me and Anna. <laughs> we are not so good in Danish. Uh, so, um, yeah. So tell us, Sine, who are you? Well, uh, many Except things. Except being an <laughs> angel, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, I, I'm many things, uh, and now also I see myself as a singer, but in my everyday life I, I do uh, conscious healing. I practice that with, I, I just started up my own uh, company, got called uh, Yuka. No, that's <laughs> yours. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for this thank promotion. You. But I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, key to empowerment. Key to empowerment. Yes. Okay. And Sounds fantastic. Yeah, it's it's very very new, very fresh, but it's I just um I love to be able to to help others one on one with whatever. So this conscious healing, can you tell us uh, what it's about? Yes. Um it's about having old beliefs and if there's like whatever that something might be in your life that that is not working but you wouldn't like I don't know what to do about it and it might be physical or mentally um, then people come to me and and uh, and often it's like some old beliefs that we've created when we were children that we're not aware of um, so we can work with that and change them into new beliefs and basically it's giving them back the power like empower them some so that they don't need me uh, okay. in the long run that sounds really beautiful so uh, if someone would like to work with you uh, as a healer 
uh, with Keto Empowerment, where they can find you, how they can contact you? Uh, well, I'm on LinkedIn and um, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook. And so what's, what's the name that you go by? What's your uh, yeah full name? <laughs> <Or> <laughs> My name is uh, Sina Bia, um or Sina Castle. Uh, you can also find me under, uh, but Sina Bia at LinkedIn. Uh, so for uh, for those of you who are from Denmark listening to us, you will be able to figure it out. But uh, for those of you who are maybe not necessarily Danish, we will have uh, seen a, a featured in at You've Got Five Options on our Facebook page. So you will be Thank able you. to uh, to find her. And uh, so tell me, Sina, a little bit like how how did it happen uh, that you became a conscious healer? Like what's your journey? How did you get there? Um. It's a long one, but I'll try to to wrap it up. Um, well, three years ago, three and a half years ago, my life had, you know, um, gotten into a bit of a mess, and I, I was really, really struggling. And where, it, like, I was just suppressing all of my emotions, and uh, and that had leaded me to to drinking. I I lost my mom to suicide when I was 22, and and I just couldn't handle that. So, so I used alcohol and I quit that three and a half years ago. And since that, it's just been a process of looking into myself. And a bit more than a year ago, I was, there were still some things that, you know, suddenly, like I quit drinking, but a lot of my beliefs were still there. So I met this lady, Cynthia Lamb from the U.S. And, um started to work with her one on one uh, and it's changed my life and it was my dear friend Elisa who recommended me um to her and I've started to work with her uh one on one and then in January she started up this education uh, in conscious healing and yeah it's amazing so it seems like you have experienced uh, this method on yourself mm. and it really helped you to get out from some difficult time in your life And yes. by observing yourself, how powerful and wonderful that method is, you have actually decided yourself to help others. Yeah, because I've exactly I know that it works and and I've gone from seeing myself as a victim. Like I was really my life was just showing me that I was unconsciously seeing myself as a victim and being so afraid of, of standing up and. Uh, being out in the world and I would never like have dared to to sing like this <laughs> just uh, just a year ago uh, so it's changed so much but you know what Sina, I have to say that uh, that's something that I I've been observing for some time now many people who are going into either coaching or healing or leading others, they usually have a story behind. Mm -hmm. And then after they start to feel better and get better, they really feel an urge to share uh, and help others that are in, in a bad place. And I, I think that this is uh, one of the most authentic type of entrepreneurship you can actually involve yourself in because it, 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 it sounds for me like you have a mission a purpose to help others. And I think that's really, really beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you, Sina, what does it mean for you to listen to your heart? Well, I've now, you know, I'm only 30, but I've, I've learned what happens when I don't. <laughs> okay. And that, that really makes me, make me struggle. Um, but to listen to my heart is to, that um, what really, you know, brings me joy, inner joy, like from when I was a kid. I think that's that's how to to explain it. It's a feeling more than a, a knowing. I can't, you know, feel it with my hand. It's I have to feel it in my heart. The joy um, comes out in many ways. Yeah. It's a beautiful way to put it. The listen to the joy. 
Yeah, mm. we also talked with Marta many times when we were solving challenges that there is a lot of information in what was bringing us the joy when we were children. Yes. And many of those things we decided just to, you know, shovel under the carpet. If that is an English expression, our listeners, I mean, <laughs> like when you hide something and you try to neglect it. And, uh, and uh, I think singing was one of those things for you, right? Because yes. this is the first time since when, when you are singing, actually, uh, like uh, more than in your bedroom. It's first time since years, right? Yes. It's it, um, amazing. It's it's the first time that, well, I've recorded some videos for some friends, uh, which is also the reason why I'm here now. Um, but otherwise, I haven't been, I think I was maybe 20 last okay. time that then I've been singing maybe at a birthday party but um, like in front of people it's been a long time wow and th that makes it even more special <laughs> so this is a radio show where miracles are happening yes yeah. but it, it was truly amazing and uh, I think we also talked once with Marta you know she had uh, when she was a kid and she remembered it actually right now. She had a, a, a dream or like you were pretending that you have your own radio. Yeah. And it's something that you never remembered like throughout your adult life. And only when we got this chance to be on the radio, Marta one day came and she was like, do you know when I was a kid, I actually had my own like radio. I was playing radio. Wow. Yeah, I was really recording myself on this, you know, old fashioned, you know, recording uh, with tapes, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I had so many tapes. So I, w I would remember myself like recording hours, you know, of uh, my own material. Of course, there was no audience to it <laughs> apart from that myself. That is so cool. <laughs> I think maybe we can use some footage <laughs> <laughs> on our show. Really well, so? it was in Polish. <laughs> yeah. But it also makes me because you asked Sina, what does it mean to, to listen to your heart or follow your heart? The funny thing is that I think sometimes it might be something very subconscious that you are not aware of. Like, for instance, us saying yes to the radio and it might have been in you. You were just not aware. You said yes, but it was an instinct. We, we never saw each other as a radio people before. Uh, so sometimes it might be something following an opportunity that appears in front of you and if it feels right at the moment just saying yes and we guys had a little bit of a conversation with Sina before going live and we were talking about you know you say yes to something then you might have doubts yes. but you still have to go through it follow through it so uh, what, what kept you uh, motivated and not running away from the station and actually you know singing well, what was the what was the thing that actually kept you here that you are here and you are singing? Because I I know when uh, when Marta asked me, uh, she had heard me sing for a very short <laughs> time because m my friend Elisa had shared the video with her and and Marta asked me, well, do you want to be on our show? And I was just like, yes, I like with my whole body, I was just feeling so much joy and. Um, and then when I woke up this morning, I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. This is so, I'm going to make a fool out of myself. What am I, um, yeah, what are others going to think? And, but it's just, but I know what to do with that now that, okay, I just listen. Okay. I hear you, um, listen to that fear. And then I, uh, you know, Elisa, my friend, had texted me, oh, I really believe in you and you're going to do great. And my other friend had texted me and I, you know, um, I slept at a friend's place and she was like, yeah, you're going to do great. So that support, but also to follow through with it. Like I knew like showing up and even though, yeah, I might, you know, make a mistake or just the part of showing up, doing it. Yeah. will make me overcome that fear. Yeah. And it's so beautiful because now you have uh, the people here at the studio and probably also our listeners like really listening, you know, from heart to heart. It's really beautiful. It's uh, so amazing to have you here. Yeah. And I think we should give you another opportunity to sing for us. And now the song is uh, requested by David Villanueva and it's present tense by Radiohead. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, here it comes. This dance 
This dance is like a weapon. It's like a weapon of self defense. Self defense against the prison. Against the prison. Prison dance. I won't get heavy. Don't get heavy. Keep it light, keep it moving. I'm doing no harm, and as my world. Comes crashing down. I'm dancing, freaking out. I'm freaking out. Being deaf, dumb, and blind. You are lost. In a you, I'm lost, yeah. And I won't turn around when the penny drops. I won't step now. I won't slag off, or all this love will be in vain. Stop from falling. Down in my mind, it's no one's business but mine. That all this love has been in vain. In a you, I'm lost. In a you, I'm lost. Yeah. In you, I'm lost. In you, I'm lost. Thank you. Oh my God! Again. <laughs> And I have to say thank you to the ones that. Uh, Ask for these songs, both uh, "Sweater Weather" and "Present Tense," because I really love the lyrics. I actually didn't really know them, so I I'm so happy for um, proposing those. Okay, Luba and uh, David, thank you very much for those requests. Uh, And uh, yeah, I, I think I have to blow my nose or wipe my eyes or something because I'm a mess right now. So uh, it was uh, it was amazing, Sina. I I felt like I'm. It's a weird comparison, like I'm in a church, you know. I felt very uplifted in this spiritual way, you know, guys. I I don't know how it sounds exactly on the radio, but we are sitting here now, so there is something a little bit more than Sina singing to a microphone. There is an energy that gets. Um, I would say emanated from you, and it's uh, absolutely unbelievable. And you have very nice vibrato, by the way. I don't know if this is how you pronounce it, but it it it's yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you for allowing us to witness this experience. Yeah, I'm so so happy that you you know you have talked to your fears and you didn't let them keep you uh, from coming here. And <laughs> yeah, it's really really an honor to have you here. And now we will move to the next part of our um, of our show. Uh, we will look into the survey results. Uh, so we have asked just three questions this time to our uh, followers, and they are all related to listening to the heart or not, uh, like you know exactly. decision or taking. Not. Yeah. So Anna, will you are you ready to <coughs> share that? I am almost ready, guys. I have my computer and I have my mouse, and I'm not afraid to use it. So, 
here it goes. So as you know, uh, as our little tradition already, we are putting some questions both on Facebook and Instagram. And it's quite funny because many times we have different answers, like Instagram people are being more reserved in some uh, areas. So they, those results are not always the same. And we asked three questions this time. Normally we are going with five, but this one, it was three questions. And the first question was, heart or mind, what do you follow when making decisions? And we actually gave our wonderful followers six options because you know, Facebook have those reactions like a heart and a like. So we gave them six different options, but they only uh, were answering two of them. Uh, there was of course uh, mind and heart and then I follow my parents advice. I thought it's kind of funny. <laughs> no one have chosen that by the way. Then I try to find a fine balance between heart and mind. I seek help from my friends. And the last one was I sent my challenge to you've got five options. And I would like to say that I was uh, slightly disappointed that no one have chosen this one, but okay. So the results are 10% of our Facebook followers have indicated that when they make decisions, they use their mind because ras rational decisions are their type of a thing. And 90% said that they try to find a fine balance between heart and mind. So basically no one follows heart completely. Most of a uh, huge, huge um, majority huge majority, that's not even an expression in English. Majority of people said that they try to find balance. On Instagram, we had to make a simplified version because we don't have those reactions. Well, afterwards I discover we do, but I didn't do it like this. I only had answers, I follow mind or I follow heart. And here we got 67% for heart and 33% for mind. So I would say that, um, yeah, especially this balance, I think people are trying to find balance between heart and mind. And it makes me wonder why no one answered heart, but there were people who answered only mind. You know, I have, I have a feeling that the heart has some sort of stigma of being irrational, crazy, and you know, a little bit cuckoo. So what do you think about this results, ladies? Well, I, I, I just, uh, you know, following your heart, what you said about, yeah, that it might be cuckoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that uh, actually many would think, like, don't dare to go with their heart because oh, they're so afraid, like, it's not going to fit into, like, society or what will my friends or parents think. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that I think might so. be, but really interesting results. Understand yeah. your disappointment. Yeah, with now you got five <laughs> options. It's like literally <laughs> the survey comes from you've got five options. Yeah. The only thing we do is we advise and then we ask people. So what do you follow when making decisions? No one asks us like guys, you know, it's like uh, you can try. We use both our heart and, and mind when we solve your problems. So, yeah. But I, I will tell just, my friends. Yes, please, please yes. do so. Please <laughs> do so. So I will. I will not talk any any more about this disappointing moment this morning. So Marta, what do you think? Well, I think it's really <coughs> cool that on Instagram you were only you only figured out how to do the two, so that people actually had to choose between. So then it was actually, and uh, there was more people who chose the heart. 67 percent yeah yes. so yeah, it's actually you know it was great that you could uh, have these two different ways of mm -hmm. uh, approaching the same question because i think uh, people maybe are might be afraid to just choose hard you know like put themselves out there i always follow my heart or something but actually when there is no other option <laughs> for like a balanced way then the heart comes in Yes, actually, that, you are right. That's a good observation. Mm, yeah. So I, I have this impression that even though maybe it's considered still to be a little bit cuckoo or something, but I feel that deep down in our hearts, we know that if we mm. don't follow our heart, if the decision is like incongruent <laughs> with the heart, like opposite to what the heart says, we are not going to be happy. No. Yeah, I and think, I think I, yes, yes. No, and I think also the more that we talk about it, that it's uh, 
also many it's like but what is your heart is like but like if you think about your intuition mm -hmm. um it's um that can be the same or for me that's uh that's a very good point exactly like, uh, or like we say in the mark like this stomach feeling mm -hmm. the gut feeling <laughs> so, yeah the gut feeling um to to follow that um and that it's and to trust i think it's also really to trust your own gut your own instinct because there's like a billion opinions out there and and uh, content and it's uh, so to really really trust your own gut instinct yeah. and actually it is becoming more popular in business as well mm. i found a lot of information a lot of articles and it's becoming you know that this is the edge that you can do all the database, you know, uh, learn decisions and so on. But actually the decisions that are actually the ones that get someone, you know, really somewhere, even in business, are the one based on instinct. So I think this is also changing the perception of... Yeah, I, I wow. totally agree because I was thinking, you know, I think it became more acceptable to follow your heart in your personal matters. And I think that this is an overcompensation after all the centuries where the marriage were done because of the you know rational reasons when it was more like a contract and then there was some sort of a love and sexual liberation that we should look for soulmate and I remember mm. I was even reading some kind of a survey in 60s women in the United States when they were in college they were asked if you would meet a man that fulfills the requirements for your husband yet you don't love him would you still marry more than 90% said yes that was in 60s when they repeated the same study in 90s then it was i think only 30 percent who said yes so it's wow. changing you know we are getting this like follow your heart follow your love and stuff like this but in business it's really new it's really new because no one believes not no one many people have this like in business what do you mean follow your gut you follow the data you follow the proof you follow the business case and I uh, I hear more and more, Marta, I totally agree with you, that people are just following the gut, maybe not hard because then it has this stigma of cuckoo, but the gut feeling, you know, I really feel that this is a good move for me, you know, or I feel I should do this right now. And this is many times when the breakthrough comes. Yes. yes. So what was the other question? Tell us, Anna. I will tell you guys. The second question is, are you good at following your heart? And here we gave three answers. One was not really, I don't find it useful. A yes, I do it all the time and not so good, but I'm trying to learn and do it more often. And here 34% said that yes, they do it all the time. And 66% said not so good, but I'm trying to learn and do it more often, which means that there were 0% of people who said, not really, I don't find it useful. So it looks like some people are following their heart all the time, but the majority admits that it's not so easy for them, but they are trying to learn how to do it. On Instagram, 86% of people said yes, they are good at following their heart and 14% said no. Again, there were only two answers to choose from. So if people had to choose yes and no, they were choosing in majority yes. It's a really, it's actually cool to get these two different perspectives mm -hmm. uh, from Facebook and Instagram. And it's quite interesting that those uh, answers are very often different uh, from, the yeah. two, uh, from the two platforms. So maybe there are different profiles of people on Facebook and different profiles on Instagram. I have to look into our followers. Who are those people? Make a profile. Yeah, it's quite interesting that yeah. there's a difference. Yeah, it um. is. Because, for instance, you know, uh, even if I look at Facebook results, there was not even one person who said, not really, I don't find it useful. Yet on Instagram, 14% said, no, I don't follow. So it's actually quite interesting, yeah? Yeah. So how about you, ladies? Let's start with Sina. How is it for you now and following your heart and following your instinct? Are you good with it? Yes. I'm but I'm learning more and more and, and I thought that um, yeah from the survey of, of Facebook where like you could answer not so good but I'm trying to learn and that just made me think about also what you said before and about that we have so many clues when we are kids 
and and we think that we have to learn through life, but we know so much when we're little, and and I think it's uh, for me at least it's it uh, coming back to you know unlearn and and learn what I what I knew as a as a kid because there was so much I I knew what I found joy in. So now I really. But it takes time also to learn, is this my intuition or to, to get to know the voice of, of your soul or your heart. So it takes time and also to not be blown away by the fear that might comes up straight after. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, when I think about it, Sina, I think that when you make a decision, right, mm. and you make a decision based on your gut instinct or heart and it turns out bad, Mm. People are like, you were crazy, you were crazy, you know, you should be more rational. However, if you make the same decision based on logic and you calculate things and this and that, and the decision turns out to be wrong as well, people are like, well, that's life. You know, you prepared yourself, you made all the research, it just happened. So you get more stigma when even if in two cases the decision turns out to be not the right decision. When you made it rationally, people will not call you crazy. They will say, bad luck, you couldn't predict some things, you really prepared yourself. But if you will make the same decision following your heart, you'll get a label of being ir irresponsible, irrational, uh, following some stupid dreams. And I think there is some sort of a pressure in our cultures, especially in Western culture, to at least it was, to be more rational because then you are like really preparing. Yet, if you make a wrong decision, you don't get uh, so judged, you know, you prepared yet, this is what happened. So it's really interesting. But on the upside, if you have dared to follow your heart, and it did come true, then you are so brave. Then oh, everyone is, you are a hero, you are <laughs> so brave, and I admire you and so on. So it definitely, you know, it takes some gut to actually follow your gut. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it takes some gut to yeah. follow your gut. Both mm. of you are really great examples mm. of that. Thank you, thank you to very me. much. Yeah. Oh, you really you. inspire me. Yeah, especially with that. Uh, guys, by the way, our dear listeners, we went live today on Instagram and Facebook, uh, realizing that some of us have really short hands. That was me. And <laughs> it was scary. But we actually just did exactly that. We were talking about doing this for months. And I uh, was talking with Marta yesterday. I was like, we should do it. And we were even thinking here, we will do it here in a studio and so on. And then, you know, we were preparing for all the things. And then Sina came. We had 15 minutes to get in here. And I was like, fuck it. Uh, uh, I, I used the effort. <laughs> uh, it's too late. It's on. But we, we can do it. And I was like, Marta, let's do it. Let's just do it. We have 13 minutes to go live. But doesn't matter. Let's just do it. And she was like, yeah, just let me get my lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> I took the lipstick as well. That didn't <laughs> help. In, <coughs> sorry, that didn't help in my case, but it doesn't matter. And we just pulled the hand and we just made it and it's out there. And uh, yeah, it, it was purely following our gut. We were not calculating what we will say and what should be the best time to actually release it. Because, you know, you have those peaks when people. Yeah. No, we just did it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm definitely also learning that art of listening and following my heart, my instinct and so on. But now, Anna, the last question the from our... Yes, the very last question was, have you ever followed your heart and something amazing has happened? And on Facebook, 100% said yes. On Instagram, 90% said, said yes and 10% said no. So there were some poor people on Instagram that followed their heart and it didn't really work. But that's always in mm -hmm. life. You, you can make any decision and it can go wrong. So quite amazing results because in both cases, majorities of people followed their heart and something amazing happened and i remember we got two comments one was from marta she can share it and the other one was from some girl who wrote that she met her boyfriend in another in another country i think and then they decided just to try it and now they live together in Aarhus, and they are both not from denmark so she said she followed her heart and i think it's more 
like it, it is quite, you know, in a love matters, people are, yeah, courageous enough to do it. Marta, your story now. Yeah, I had mm -hmm. my story and uh, my story was also related to the heart matters. So I met this guy from, an, from a Caribbean island when I was in Denmark 15 years ago. And that was not having any chance to, to happen. He Rationally. was living in a couple of months back to his uh, funny Caribbean island. And uh, I was staying in Denmark. I was so young. I was just 21 years old. And uh, yeah, it ended up that we started uh, dating, regardless of the fact that we were supposed to not to do it. And uh, then, you know, at one point, I literally packed a backpack. I literally moved from Poland to a Caribbean island with one big backpack, like going to go there, get a job. And uh, I applied for studies and so on. And yeah, now it's been 15 years ago and I'm still married to that guy and we have three kids together so definitely was worth going after that you know hard feeling like he's the one i gotta go <laughs> yeah but it's actually so quite, amazing. It, it it is amazing because uh there were not so many you know rational uh, incentive to do it you were very young and you were risking quite a lot so yeah now when i think about it it's it's an awesome story yeah a yeah. lot of risk and now I'm actually really into uh, following the heart in like business and work related matters. I'm really interested in that topic. And I have found some really great uh, tips on how to do it from Marie Forleo. So now we will talk a little bit about taking decisions and listening to your heart and <coughs> more in relation like, you know, like the, the more down to earth things like business or your career, work life and so on. And in order to get that topic up and running, I have uh, found my favorite video from Marie Forleo. Marie Forleo is quite a famous person. Yeah. She has Marie TV and she also has her own very successful business. And she is a lady that when taking decisions, she 100% of the time follows her heart. This so she, amazing. yeah. And so she, in consideration that she's famous, rich and successful, that's actually not a bad thing. Not a bad thing, definitely. And uh, Marie has shared in the Marie TV show how you can make it work. So when taking a decision, how can you, you know, find out uh, what's the best decision for you? And she said that she uses four different exercises when taking decisions. And spe uh, specifically, that first one is the one that really involves listening to your inner wisdom. Because we were discussing that before, what does it really mean to listen to your heart? And we were talking like, you know, the gut feeling and we were discussing, you know, instinct, intuition and so on. So it all can be somehow called inner wisdom. And she said that the first exercise she does every single time when she needs to take a decision, she actually listens to what her body tells her. She says that I think our body has the wisdom that overpasses the ego, personality, mind and all these things and can give you very clear signs whether something is good for you or not good for you. And it's described in a way that if you ask yourself a question, should I do it? You tune in into your body and you try to sense whether you feel expansion and you can even like feel that your body goes, you know, like up forward. and in front, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. forward. And this is a clear sign. Yes, this is a good thing for you. Or you can feel contraction and your body can actually go like backwards. And this is a clear sign. No. And this is something pretty amazing. And for me, the contraction part was quite easy to grasp. And I have had it in my life. I could easily relate to it. But the expansion part, I was like, what is this expansion? How does it really feel? And you know, what is it all about? But I have recently been practicing doing that exercise myself. And, you know, practicing with you can do it with really funny things. You can even do it like with saying your name. Like I can say, my name is Gertrude. And listen to what it says, you know, is it true or not true? Is it, you know, does it resonate or not resonate? So you can actually practice it with very simple things to start recognizing the reactions. What, yeah, yeah. 
What's mm -hmm. the reaction from your body? Because it can be something very slight. It can be yes. something, you know, the expansion thing or contraction thing. It can be a really small uh, movement in your body. So it does require practice for many of us if we are not used to doing it. So it's quite an amazing thing. I started to do it and uh, with some decisions quite big in my life, I had such an amazing, strong reaction from my body that it was like, no, it was like, hell no, that's not the right thing for me to do. And uh, it's pretty amazing what the body can tell you. So what do you think, ladies, of that method? Well, I love it. I really, I, uh, I was, uh, I've used it for a while, just uh, that uh, expansion, I've just called it yes or no, but I, I used it last summer, I was in Washington for a month and I just thought, wouldn't it be fun if I just decide my way through the city? Like, should I go this way? Yes, no. And I, I really ended up meeting a lot of uh, quite amazing people. And also an event actually uh, that I went to here in Aarhus that you recommended me, Marta, uh, with Meetup, where I was like, should I go? Yes. And I met a, a teacher, Nicola. So, yeah, it can lead you to. It can lead you places. Yes. Well, actually, I'm not sure. I might be doing that somehow subconsciously, but I think I will try to be more uh, conscious about it, to observe my reactions. I think I will start with asking myself, am I an old Japanese gentleman? And then I will see what my body will tell me. But, you know, when you mentioned that our body has a wisdom that uh, suppresses the ego, the personality and things like this, right? I'm thinking our body was designed to actually feel the danger also from the outside. We actually have this set of tools that are biological to, to recognize those things. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, for me, it's it's quite amazing how much the body can tell us it's because it's this intuitive, instinctive reaction that overpasses this, you know, clutter and fears and so on. But sometimes you can have a clear answer in, a, you know, in a way of expansion or contraction. And as, let's take the scenario where it's expansion and you're like, OK, that's the right thing for me to do. And then a lot of fear comes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. in that case, uh, Marie says, there are some other things that you can do to help yourself out. And one of them is something that we use a lot in You've Got Five Options, and it's called the worst case scenario. So this is something that we uh, we have recommended in many of the challenges. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, of course, it works best if you write it down and you are very specific. So for any kind of option that you might have, for example, for your business or something, you write down. So what's the absolutely worst thing that can happen and how specifically are you going to deal with that? Because that's another thing. Majority of the decisions you can get yourself out of, even though they ended up being bad or you ended up, you know, with failure or something. You can get your, you, you can lift yourself up pretty quickly. And a lot of fear can feel, you know, overwhelming. But when you start writing it down and when you see that you actually have five ways to get out in case uh, this thing happens, it's really, really useful. I will speed up a little bit now because I want uh, Sina to have the time to sing the last song. So I will tell you the next one, the one that we haven't been using that much at You've Got Five Options is best case scenario. Because, yeah, yeah, because it's actually, you know, you can think about worst cases and so on. But what's actually the best thing that can happen? Maybe you will finally start living your dream. Maybe you will finally get something that you have really wanted for a very long time. So I love this best case scenario. And if you still have doubt or if there is a lot at risk, a really cool thing is work it. And what it means is try to experience it and see if it's really for you. So is there a way you can try out a little bit this decision? Maybe you can find a volunteer job or maybe you can sign up somewhere, get an agreement with someone that you can actually try this thing out for yourself. And uh, we will have we have already linked that uh, video from Marie once, but we will have it again uh, at You've Got Five Options so that you guys can uh, look into that um, at any point. And I will just ask for like very short comments from two of you. What do you think about the remaining methods? 
Sina, what do you think about worst case scenario, best case scenario? Well, I, do, I really love the best case scenario because, uh, yeah, I also I, we can always look at the worst case, but we forget that uh, the best case scenario. Yeah, I, I really hope that uh, you're going to use that even more. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. I, I have to say that I'm one of those best case scenario people that always like dream and think about, you know, wonderful things. And half of my life is living with a head in the clouds. But <laughs> worst case scenario actually helped me recently because I have also realized I was kind of against it because like, why do you think about negatives? But then we did, did that exercise a couple of times with Marta and I realized that what we are afraid the most is the unknown. Is mm. if you have one million thoughts in your head and they are not structured, it's just fear after fear after fear. Once you start to write it down and deal with it, they are not so scary anymore. So I have experience with both and I think both are great. Yeah. Okay. So now wrapping up our wonderful show. I've just loved this uh, today. I would like self promotion. Yeah, self promotion. (laughs) But I I, love it. Yeah, I must (laughs) say that I loved it uh, very much because of Sina. So, uh, uh, Sina, will you tell us which song did you choose as the one that makes you listen to your heart? Yes. Uh, And first of all, thank you so much for having me. I love your show and your podcast. So Mm, thank thank you you for doing what you do. Um, I chose uh, Get It Right by Mu and Diplo. And I chose it because I've used it so much um, to get me into the right uh, spirit and really to get that joy into my body and to make me believe in myself. So, And I love Mu. I think she's incredible and just being herself. So... Yes. Okay, that's fantastic. Before we will listen to Sina, which is back in, I think, 15 seconds, I would like to tell you guys that all information about Sina and her newly started uh, company where she is trying to change people's life for the better will be available on our Facebook fan page. And then you can find uh, Sina through there. Um, So, guys, I guess we are in for a treat. Thank you. Very welcome. I'm walking down that road where did all the flowers go? They say we're supposed to grow, learning from the highs and lows. All eyes lying on me, oh, begging me to play the role. But I'm gonna get it right. I'm gonna get it right. They can try to hold me down, but I am, I'm gonna get it right. When the sky is filled with smoke and fire, I'm gonna get it right. All I want is something better in a purple light. They can try to hold me down, but I am, I'm gonna get it right. All my dreams are running wild, I'm gonna chase them down. They say you can lose your mind, hurry up, you're out of time. I know that I will rise and shine, even in the coldest night. Cause I'm gonna get it right, I'm gonna get it right. They can try to hold me down, but I am. I'm gonna get it right When the sky is filled with smoke and fire I'm gonna get it right All I want is something better In a purple light They can try to hold me down But I, I'm gonna get it right I'm gonna get it right Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. I'm not crying. I'm crying. It's okay to cry. (laughs) It's okay to cry. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.